So um, I say for me, um, I spent a lot of time. Um, it's actually easier the more you do it, because obviously the first year was uh, a lot of learning, both for me and the students and, and the other teachers that work with us. Um, but this year, because I've got this returning group of year eights, um, so each year I kind of get a little bit more traction at the start. Um, we followed the Stanford design process um, uh, as, a, as a fundamental and the students take on roles um, specifically to do the challenges. So within every group, there'll be someone who has a, a particular area of responsibility. Sometimes it can be two people doing the same job. Sometimes they might have multiple hats, but it's a way of them sort of having something that they're accountable for. Uh, and so we use it not just for one, two, three tech, but I use it for other things. So the start of the year, um, anything as simple as um, doing some board game design. Last year we did escape rooms. Um, I also get them to apply the same fundamentals for science fair investigations and technology projects. Um, so we kind of use it um, in everything. And then recently... Um, we've been using it with students to develop teaching models for literacy as well. So they take the idea of what they want to learn and they actually do a, a full empathize, define, ideate, prototype and test for a teaching model for something they need to learn. Um, so it's a way of them not just getting a handle on what they need to learn, but what's involved in that and then actually identifying those elements for themselves. Yeah. So for our students, um, so the senior team is um, has around 60 students in it. Um, and every year we um, encourage all of the students to take on a special project of some sort and Tahiro Toru Tech is one of them. Um, so I usually have um, anywhere between three and six teams that I'm managing through the process. Um, when I was an in-class teacher, um, it was actually much easier. We would be able to negotiate um, the time that they had to do it. Um, depending on what they were working on at the time. For example, a group of my girls um, had a really literacy-based um, activity that they were promoting. And so instead of doing the literacy that the rest of the class was doing, this was all built around the skills they needed for Tahiro Toru Tech. Um, so being flexible and being able to identify what the kids are getting out of the project that they're doing and um, swapping out other things that might be happening um, yeah, to, to make it successful for them. Um, because I'm not the um, official classroom teacher at the moment, um, I catch up with my groups um, once a week when I'm in their classroom um, and we spend time going through it all together. Um, and then they catch up with me when they need to. But I found that to be much harder because that negotiation of time then mm. involves, you know, negotiating with their classroom teachers and other things. Um, but one thing I have found really successful is the use of the industry mentors. We've got a fantastic mentor um, who's regularly in touch with our kids. She comes in um, once a week, once a fortnight and um, checks on them, sees how they're going. They really um, respond to her advice. Um, you know, she's <laughs> um, on them while they're in lockdown. You know, she'll be Zooming them and everything just to, to keep it going. So she's a big part of um, how we manage and um yeah, get our kids successfully through everything. Can I just ask, um, just to delve a little bit deeper in, into that, Mark, you mentioned um, that you run through sort of um, with your students and assign them specific roles. Do you have a, a way of doing that or do you kind of leave that up to the students? Um, actually, yeah, it's, it is up to the students. Um, what we do is we spend a bit of time unpacking what those roles involve and we have to give the students different opportunities to have a go. Um, so when I'm looking at, um, so let's say for one, two, three tech itself, um, is I get every student to think of an issue they might want to pursue. Um, and then we open that into um, a whole class forum and then the students go through those and then they select out of those their top four picks. Um, and then they also indicate the type of role that they might want to do within those different groups. And that's kind of how we choose what they're going to go. So we go from having just say 54 different issues to suddenly I've got 16 and then I might end up with 12 or 13. Um, and the students um, kind of give them almost like a little CV about why they think they'd be a good lead engineer or good communications director or a good resource manager or, you know, team leader, whatever they put down. Um, and then the teams kind of pick themselves in a way. Uh, and one thing that's done really well is the first year it was all friendship groups. Um, but every year, the year eights, when they come back, they go straight and it's like, no, I'm going to find people who are, are going to succeed with. And the groups actually get better and better each time. They still get a few drift together. That's always going to happen. 
Um, but again, I've, I've got some students who are, um, they're just on fire with it and they're just developing things and they haven't stopped. Um, and again, as Mel said, there's always such a range of projects. You just never know what you're going to get. And it's, yeah, um, it is absolutely fascinating to see what they see as a problem and how they're going to fix it. Brilliant. And so Mel, I know that this year is a little bit different um, for you because you're not um, in class <laughs> all the time. But um, when you work in class, do you know roughly how much time you actually spent with your students working on the projects? I mean, um, myself so personally, um, we had a set period um, once a week, which was designated that that was the time they had for me. Um, but I was constantly getting emails from me because just because it was kind of like their um, uninterrupted time with me, um, but they're constantly coming back because it's all so self-directed and self-driven. Um, yeah, they're always after you. And I think, you know, you can give it as much time as you want, but you also have a bunch of other kids doing other sorts of projects. Um, yeah. So Mel, are you saying that you um, programmed a meeting time specifically with each group to discuss? Yeah. Okay. So um, in class overall, how much time do you think would be allocated? One, two, three. Um, yeah, so for us it was um, one block a week. So that was an hour and a half dedicated time just for the project. Um, but there were always catch-ups um, in between that, which are the more spontaneous as you go. I And some weeks that was massive and other weeks it wasn't so much. I'm not really sure that I could put a time on that. Mm. So when you meet with the kids, what were you actually meeting them about? Uh, so they come in and um, share where they're up to. Um, they discuss where they think they're going next. That's a good opportunity um, for me to redirect them, um, you know, the projects that they want to achieve are things that in reality to get to the end point they're after, you know, are years in the making, not 12 weeks. So it's about keeping them, um, you know, aware of the fact that it's a, a project for a short term and what's going to be achieved in that time. And then what might you want to do in the future to keep it going and to build it better, but, but keeping it into what's a manageable amount for them. Um, I learned that in the first year where what the kids chose to do was insanely massive um, mm -hmm. and for us it was about getting the final fully completed um, article which isn't necessarily the case um, and so and that's something that the kids find really difficult you know they want the fully functioning all the bells and whistles project and, and that's not really what it's all about. So your role was really pivotal wasn't it in guiding those kids and keeping them grounded? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And um, yeah, like a lot of the other stuff that they ask, um, I'm not necessarily the right person to answer either. So that's where our industry mentor comes in and people like that. Um, so yeah, you might be helping to coordinate, but you're certainly not necessarily expected to be the person with all the answers. Mm. And I guess it's just um, reinforcing the fact that, as you mentioned, Mel, the challenge isn't about having a working prototype at, at the end of it. Um, it's all about the process. It's very much about the journey. Um, you know, we, we want to be able to give the students the opportunity to sort of feel what it's like to work on a real life IT project. And, you know, a lot of IT projects don't even reach the finish line. So um, just doing the documentation, working as a team, doing the pivot points, yeah, very important. Yeah. 